Hi, everybody. Go ahead, please sit down. Tell her who you are. That was President Bartlett's suggestion to Donna. For the entire episode, Donna had been trying to find a way to recognize her high school English teacher, Mrs. Morello, who went above and beyond for her school in Wisconsin. In the end, President Bartlett calls Donna into the Oval Office. Charlie has Mrs. Morello on the phone, and Donna doesn't know what to say. Tell her who you are. And Donna says, Mrs. Morella, I'm in the Oval Office with the President of the United States, and it's because of you. Now, I teach writing at a community college not too far from here, so I might be just a little biased bringing up this moment. And I want to thank Aaron and everyone who contributed to that episode for that beautiful tribute to educators everywhere. We just came from the Oval, but even though Joe, Joe is away hosting leaders of Australia and India and Japan in Delaware, he wanted to make sure that President Bartlett and his staff <laughs> had a chance to see the Oval Office again. <laughs> I often talk to my students about the power of good storytelling because it can inspire and shape our world. When the West Wing lights up on our screens, every swell of the opening theme, every fast talking, fast walking journey through seemingly endless halls, every performance changes how we see the public servants behind these white walls striving for a better tomorrow. Thank you to Warner Brothers for making today possible. And I'm glad to have so many wonderful members of Joe's cabinet joining us today. Do you want to raise your hand so people know who you are? Yeah, they are. <laughs> so make sure you say hello to them. So I'm grateful to everyone on stage for taking the time to be here because your work inspired so many to step forward and serve our country. Maybe even some of the people here today. Working in Congress, at nonprofits, or on political campaigns, or at the White House. That's the power of storytelling. To inspire the Donnas and the Charlies of the world who know that they have something to give to this country, and the, Mor and the Mrs. Morellos, who may not serve in Washington, but change us for the better, all the same. So anytime we begin to slip into cynicism or apathy, we just have to remember Jed Bartlett's White House, a place where there are big blocks of cheese <laughs> <laughs> and everyone belongs where you do good. That's the story the West Wing showed the nation. This family that we create here, dedicated to a purpose greater than any one of us, I see it every day. It's something that's close to my heart because with every new hire, the Biden family grows too. Yes. The work is hard and the days are long. And yes, there are times when the weight of all we have before us can just feel too heavy to carry. But that's where the heart lies, where the future is created, side by side with our family of true believers, hope pushing us forward every step, each day, until the world is as it ought to be. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce President Bartlett, or as he's sometimes known, Martin Sheen. Thank you, Dr. Bartlett. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, distinguished guest of West Wing families and our gracious host, the First Lady. Um, 
I am given this opportunity rare enough these days to morph once again into the wonderful character that changed my life and a lot of others as well, uh, Jed Bartlett. Uh, so thank you, Aaron, for this opportunity. You know, the, uh, the Irish tell the story of a man who arrives at the gates of heaven and asks to be let in. St. Peter says, of course, just show us your scars. The man says, I have no scars. St. Peter says, what a pity. Was there nothing worth fighting for? We are rightly called to find something in our lives worth fighting for, something deeply personal and uncompromising, something that can unite the will of the spirit with the work of the flesh. And when we find that, we will discover fire for the second time. And then we will be able to help lift up this nation and all its people to that place where the heart is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, dear Father. Let our country awake. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Biden, and thanks, Martin. Uh, my mother's 96 years old, and I called her to tell her that the show had been invited to the White House. She said, oh, God, don't give those people any trouble. They've done enough. <laughs> I don't know exactly what kind of trouble my mother was imagining I might give the administration, but I agree with her. <laughs> I'd like to introduce just a few of the people who were able to be here today, beginning with Thomas Schlamme. Uh, Tommy, along with John Wells and myself, was an executive producer of the show, and as our principal director, Tommy was responsible for the look of the entire series, as well as being perhaps uh, the one indispensable, irreplaceable member of our team. We had a room full of very talented writers like Eli Addy, who used to work in this building. If you have a favorite moment from the show, chances are Eli had something to do with it. They, along with political professionals like Marlon Fitzwater, Peggy Noonan, Dee Dee Myers, Gene Sperling, and Lawrence O'Donnell, would pitch ideas and passionately argue the dramatic and emotional potential of stories about the census. Our cast will live on as one of the best in the history of television. Richard Schiff is here. Along with Janelle Maloney and Dulé Hill. Melissa Fitzgerald, Mary McCormick, Emily Proctor. Of course, Martin Sheen. Uh, Brad Whitford, Rob Lowe, and Alice and Jenny are all on set today, and we're not, unable to make it. The rest of us are apparently unemployed. Not yet. <laughs> My assistant of 24 years, Lauren Lohman, is here. And so is my daughter, Roxy. Uh, Dr. Biden, your husband, was Roxy's first vote. And now I imagine she'll expect to be invited to the White House by every president she votes for. <laughs> Finally, I'd also like to acknowledge Channing Dungy and everyone from Warner Brothers Television. Greenlighting our show was not a no-brainer, and we received nothing but support from the studio. The West Wing had no political agenda. We were trying to do a good show every week. 
but the greatest delivery system ever invented for an idea is a story. And once in a while, we'll hear from someone who was inspired to go into public service because of our show. And that's something that 25 years ago this week, none of us could have foreseen or even dared to hope for. The show was idealistic, aspirational, and romantic. Over the years, I've noticed that during times of peak political tension, pundits will warn us not to expect a West Wing moment. They mean not to expect a selfless act of statesmanship, not to expect anyone to put country first. Don't expect anyone to swing for the fences or reach for the stars. But the fact is, West Wing moments do happen, and Dr. Biden, we saw proof of that on the morning of July 21st. That was the kind of thing we tell stories about. This is a great honor for Tommy and for me and for all of us, and we'll never forget it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.